Venice Beach is one of the coolest, strangest, and most beautiful places I've ever been. Where else can you find, in the space of three blocks, beaches, rock and roll, crocheting clowns, this guy, and of course, Marijuana. It's the perfect place to begin your day when you're on vacation in Southern California. But by far, the best place to go after that is here. I know this sign is now in John Stamus's backyard, but this is my trip report. So it's still sitting on Harbor Boulevard. Sharon and I are in the mood for a mix of old and new, and Dio is the place for that. So our first stop is the Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage. This attraction is what happens when you merge 20,000 leagues under the sea and the Seas with Nemo ride from Disney World. Actually, I have no idea which ride was first, and I'm not getting into a who had it first, which one is best, PP contest. So please don't bust my chops. I recently attended a book signing with Marty Sklar, Disney legend and former head of Imagineering. When asked why 20K was torn down, he said the biggest problem was that the Florida boats weren't built all that well and they leaked. The subs in Disneyland are built better and probably, he said, could be set sail in the Pacific. The loss of 20K in Orlando is a real sore spot with me, but I'm not in the least bit bitter. The fish world has always been considered a silent habitat. But now, thanks to remarkable advances in marine technology, we can use instruments such as our sonar hydrophones to actually hear the fish talk. Where are you? Nowadays, the highlight of the ride is the appearance of Nemo and company through some modern technology and, I suspect, some old school magic tricks. But I really don't care about any of that. I'm back in 1985 and still hear James Mason's narration. But I'm not the least bit bitter. We'll be right back. Well, you can't regulate the temperature of fat. I can with my new range. It has a built-in deep fat fryer with an automatic temperature control. Oh, say, look at the size of that oven. Two ovens, golden griddle, French fryer. Oh, your father's been promising me a new range for years. I'm going to tell him Hot Point. See the great new 1954 Hot Point electric ranges at your Hot Point dealers soon. It was only 81 degrees in Anaheim, and we started to get cold, so Sharon and I took a quick flight to Epcot. But before we proceed, I have a question. What do you get when you take Star Tours, suck out all of the fun, and add some stomach cramps? Mission Space. Unless you ride the green side, then you just get two minutes of being yelled at by Gary Sinise. Still, it's been years since I've ridden it, so perhaps I should give it another... I'm sorry. I just can't do this. Fortunately, the newest version of the My Disney Experience mobile app has a time travel feature. So let's see. Ah, that's better.
Okay, I'll be honest. It isn't quite as good as I remember it. As dark rides go, at least in Epcot, Spaceship Earth is grander and does a better job overall. Of course, looking back is a lot easier than looking forward. I suppose, if Horizons had been replaced with something as good as, say, Soarin', I'd have forgotten completely about it by now. At the book signing, someone actually asked Marty Sklar about the closing of Horizons. And he was like, why are you asking me about a ride we replaced 15 years ago? I guess it's time to ask myself the same question. Greenside, here we come. Well, two attractions 2,500 miles apart, one of which no longer exists, was about all Sharon and I could squeeze into one day. See you next time. The opinions expressed herein are not necessarily those of Mouse Planet. In fact, they're probably not. Oh, say, look at the size of that oven.